che altri. So, good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you again to Maria Ricciardi for organizing this uh, seminar. Uh, I, I'm very glad to have a uh, fabulous, fabulous office uh, today with us. And uh, as usual, Claudia will introduce us your work and then uh, you will have uh, the time you need to <laughs> to investigate your projects and uh, at the end maybe uh, if you are available uh, we can uh, have a dialogue and maybe uh, see if the students has some questions and uh, things to say okay thank you again for being with us and uh, claudia thank you Thank you, thank you, and uh, hello everybody. Thank you, Fabulism, for having accepted our uh, invitation. It's our fifth uh, meeting today, our lectures, our dialogues. Uh, Fabulism, I'm very happy to introduce Fabulism today. The studio was founded in 2019 by Giulia Pozzi and Mia Candolina, that I, um, to, I say hello and uh, the studio is based in uh, berlin and uh, it work at the intersection so on the blurred line so let's see what blur means uh, between architecture urbanism and also landscape landscape in their opinion i think um, has a role of creation of social and economical spaces so it's a sort of promoter 
of new uh, space for uh, meetings and uh, relationship, of course. Uh, Fabulous took part to uh, many international competitions, uh, workshops, seminars, uh, and uh, won several of them uh, in Germany, for example, uh, Ukraine, Italy, and so on. Um, Giulia Pozzi and Mia Candolina both studied in Italy. Um, Giulia Pozzi studied at the Faculty of Architecture of Ferrara, uh, then the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Copenhagen. Mia Candolina instead uh, studied uh, at Politecnico of Milan with a thesis uh, developed with uh, Harvard, the University of Harvard uh, in, uh, in Boston. They had several important experiences uh, in different, in many um, big architectural firm. And uh, after that, they decided to found Fabulism at the intersection on the blur line between practice, practical practice in some, in some way, and the also uh, theoretical research. So I'm very happy to, to introduce you today and a very warm well welcome to our guest. So thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Thanks, uh, Maria Clara, Claudia, and Marco for this great opportunity. We, we really like to, to dialogue with students and uh, I, we are looking forward actually for the questions of, <laughs> of later. Uh, I will just briefly share the screen. Um, so I will talk over the first slide. Let me know if you see that. Uh, one second. Is that visible? See, see yes. yes, great. So, yes, the, the lecture of today is entitled Blurred Nature. And, uh, and uh, we wanted to actually, as you were saying, as you were introducing, define or maybe questioning ourselves and you uh, what this blurring line means. Um, we are Fabulism. I'm uh, I'm Julia. I'm Mia Condolino. And uh, and we have, as you said, we have founded Fabulism in 2019 in Berlin. And uh, right now we are we are a practice of uh, six seven architects around six seven architects. Of course, it always depends. Uh, since being a small office, it depends on the on the amount of work. But uh, at the moment, we are a small team. And uh, we founded Fabulism after um, a couple of uh, big experiences in the international offices here in Berlin. And uh, we started our professional activities uh, because we wanted, not because we won a big competition, but we, maybe because we wanted to really um, investigate or express, express ourselves, our, self, our language. Uh, we wanted also to challenge ourselves. And um, we would like to start this conversation with this picture and uh, it's a picture of, of Tempelhof and um, it's probably the most dear park or place that we have here in Berlin but is always uh, a source of, uh, of inspiration, a source of, uh, of thought that we always have when we start uh, thinking of a project because it's basically uh, it's a magic place where everything could happen and um, it's almost like a blank page where activities of very different uh, typologies could take place in a, in, a, in a very flexible environment. I mean, just to introduce, I don't know how many of you know the Temple of uh, was a former airport that was built during the uh, Nazi period in Berlin. Uh, it's a surface that it's uh, compared to the uh, surface of uh, Monaco. Uh, the, the Principato of, uh, of Monaco, so it's a, a huge surface, a flatland, where basically uh, has the capability to allow thousands of different uh, uh, programs, uh, experience, and this picture was done from us, uh, I think, two years ago, two or three years ago, it was, was in winter, uh, maybe if I remember, remember January, and basically there was this guy with the snowboard uh, and the parachute that was like creating this kind of effect that you are not anymore like in Berlin, you are like using this open space kind of differently. So 
we consider this one as a kind of uh, interesting uh, uh, public space uh, that also is a bit related with the idea of blurring now of what does it mean uh, what what is a public space what is a uh, natural space in the city yeah so starting from a broader question we when we start a project or uh, in our practice of course we always ask ourselves what does it mean being a landscape architect no what what a landscape architect is <laughs> and uh, and the more general question is what is nature that is probably uh, the most difficult question that we could answer and probably there is not an answer at all and of course if we think about the past this is a it's a famous painting from Escher Brown uh, that represents a pastoral landscape no it's from the late 19th century and uh, we always have or they always had in mind um the the, the let's say the aspect of being landscape a wild landscape more inspired to the british garden like uh, something that is wild uh, outside of the city and uh, really like a pastoral landscape so where you can uh, enjoy and and being in the nature you know so a kind of uh, dichotomy and contradiction in comparison to the to the urban structure and and of course the relationship uh, to the urban and nature nowadays it's completely different no so if we think about what nature in in cities nowadays is we probably think or not we but in general people think about uh, having a green all over the facades or on balconies or uh, let's say on on rooftop but sometimes um we we ask ourselves is this really uh, nature or is this really the relationship that we want to have uh, with nature? Or it is enough to say that the nature is like a kind of device that it's covering our architecture, it's covering, uh, taking space as a kind of uh, uh, almost decorative yeah. uh, element inside our cities, which is the performative aspect of the nature inside the cities. So sometimes this kind of answer, I mean, in our opinion, it doesn't really, um, respect the relationship that we or let's say the urban structure or we as human could have uh within the nature no so it's, i mean probably uh being landscape architect and uh, should be considered as a more responsible uh profession i would say and uh, it's not just we are not just the one that are putting uh, trees on uh, on balconies or uh, uh, like in this case, little squares on a facade. Uh, the green in the city should really have a more uh, a more impact, a more responsible uh, attitude. And uh, therefore, we we see that the the relationship between human and nature, or let's say uh, human and non-human, or urban and nature, should be more than than this dichotomy. You know? So we shouldn't see anymore. Uh, black and white uh, or uh, mm. urban and nature like two different entities but something that is more blurred something that is more uh, overpassing this kind of relationship this kind of dichotomy a little bit like uh, Donna Haraway is um, is 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 telling us in uh, in his in her books and in her uh, disciplines so it's kind of giving another type of answers to the relationship between uh, um, human and, and non-human and um, we like to to introduce also this concept uh, um, quoting andrea branzi and where it says that the distance between the natural world and the artificial world no longer exists today because the latter has become second nature so this word second nature is it's pretty intense no so it's really questioning what is nature and what is artificial can we really think about uh, an artificial or is it everything nature or everything is not natural in the end no so i mean having... the, yeah i mean in that sense the, the design practice the the project of landscape but also architecture means to, to think this uh, kind of straight relation and trying to to work 
on this border that it's not so clear. And uh, uh, a nice uh, uh, other reference is this picture that uh, if you don't know the artist, uh, you will imagine that these artists try to recreate this nature inside a museum, a, a, museum, a white box. This is Fabian Neff, he's a German uh, artist based in Berlin, and uh, he created these performances and then pictured it with the title uh, Isolation. And uh, at the first glance, you really think that this is a museum where he recreated this natural environment. But then in the end, if you study that, and if you, of course, it's, it's it more about the, the, the performance, he was actually doing the other way around. So he was recreating the white box in the middle of the forest, really playing with the, with the idea of uh, what is nature, what is artificial, can we blur the line, which is the perception of these spaces. Because in the end, it's always like a, a matter of uh, changing the point of view, no? And uh, Fabian Neck, uh, we had also the great opportunity to collaborate with him, uh, basically create this uh, um, uh, work, this research of isolation, uh, recreate, uh, trying to recreate this kind of uh, uh, installation in different spots that has then the target to to bring a meaning to different uh, kind of uh, natural, artificial or whatever situation. So it's a kind of interesting that it's always like the change of the point of view that help to to define what is uh, what is nature or what is not in some way. So we are now starting um, describing or let's say talking about um, a couple of projects. Two of them are competitions and two others are, are projects that are actually have been built or are running at the moment. And um, the first one is the vision for Berlin Brandenburg in 2017. And it was a pretty, uh, let's say, long time ago now. Sorry yeah. to interrupt you, Ju. Uh, it's just that in the next project, we hope that we try to reply on this uh, keyword of the blurring nature, because in our, uh, in the project that you will see, we always try to consider uh, the natural environment, the vegetation, uh, uh, but not only vegetation, also the materials, uh, part of a more complex uh, uh, circular system uh, and uh, that we try to experiment in the, in the project. And uh, well, it's a it's a dear project because we it was developed uh, uh, during the pandemic. And, uh, and thanks to that project that where we actually won a prize, we we then started teaching at the university um, in Kassel as in the uh, in the planning department, and uh, and then let's say after that experience we are still teaching in in Kaiserslautern at the moment, and um, so actually that opens that door, and it was very interesting uh, to start developing these other possibility with the students. So um, the vision for Berlin Brandenburg was uh, an international competition that was launched in 2019, uh, end of 2019. And uh, it was basically asked the, the team to, to propose a vision for the future expansion of, of Berlin and, and the Brandenburg that is actually the region that is surrounding Berlin in 2017. And, uh, and here you see um, a plan from Google, Google Maps of, of Berlin and uh, and the surrounding area, it's pretty big. And of course, as we were, I uh, was mentioning before, we we started this project in, um, in the end of 2019 and basically all over the 2020. So it really changed uh, yeah. our 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 perception of uh, seeing this competition because of course we nobody could. Uh, foreseen that moment. No? It was really a first experience also a complete like proce process on digital call because we were like collaborating with other offices, with other uh, uh, collaborators and all the communication was completely yeah. online. So it was really the first experience that uh, was like uh, working uh, completely digital. digital. But on the other hand, I mean, if uh, somebody would have asked us, OK, let's imagine the, the city in uh, in 50 years. Uh, and then something like that would, was happening at the moment. No? So we were really asking ourselves, can we really uh, predict what would happen in a city in 50 years? So 
for sure not. I mean, we don't, we didn't know that after two years a war was starting, and we were not sure if the population would really grow. Um, what are the new capability of uh, artificial intelligence or digital devices? But for sure, we were no because, of course, this is something that is under our eyes that uh, climate change uh, is happening. Actually, more than climate change is climate crisis at the moment. And, and so we started researching which were the aspects that uh, were in investing uh, Germany and especially Brandenburg and, uh, and the area of Berlin and around Berlin. And we su surprisingly discovered that uh, uh, the area of Brandenburg, it's pretty affected by a uh, heavy drought. And uh, despite being very green and very uh, full of water, superficial water, um, we we discovered that the underground water, like uh, you see in this last diagram, was pretty low. And so we started reading about that. And I, I mean, having a passion <laughs> out of this uh, this topic, and uh, and we see that a crucial um, uh, let's say aspect on which we could be developing the, the project was really the, the blue system, the blue network. And so we were asking uh, ourselves, can, what is the, the, the city center? What is the center uh, of a city of tomorrow? No? Is it something that is really uh, thought probably as a, in the old school style, starting from the fabric, starting from the, uh, from the infrastructural network? Or is it something that could be generated out of the out of the landscape i mean a bit in contraposition to what is the plan for the city of berlin uh, that it's basically the expansion of berlin is derived from the heavy infrastructure elements so the highway yeah. the, the railway as uh, usual in the history you know so the expansion is following this kind of radius uh, uh, shape and uh, along this uh, uh, radials uh, uh, there are the different polarities that are like uh, densifying uh, uh, even more the city. In uh, relation to that, we, we talk that uh, in the future, the future of Berlin could be drived differently, could be uh, defined and plan following the ecology, following uh, uh, the system that it's basically the hardware, the, the backbone of the old territory inside the city and in the, the Brandenburg region. So not, more, not, not anymore this kind of a star or hand shape, but something else no, that was basically uh, more uh, radicated or based uh, into blue system, green structure, energy grid and mobility network, network like uh, an overall uh, new metabolism of, of the city. No? And, and so for each of them, we were trying to give little answers, little tools, how to um, expand the city and kind of break the, the city shapes. I mean, this, that was the, the final outcome of the, of the map. And each color was um, connected to one of these two, this topic. And, uh, and what we wanted to represent was not anymore the, the shape of the, of the build structure that you see as a little grid in the background, but how to, to blur again this image, you know, how to break actually the, this star shape uh, uh, image and, uh, and emphasize uh, all the other aspects. So especially these blue, uh, green, uh, big loops that are a little bit also represented in, in the logo of the, of the project, like a, like a very big uh, network of, of parks. Uh, of regional parks in which the new centers of tomorrow, like uh, the new expansions of the city would take place based on, on these four topics. So the water, the blue uh, infrastructure, the green, the energy, and the new mobility, of course, seen as a, a more sustainable mobility, slow mobility uh, in, uh, for excellence. And uh, one of the zoom in that we were asked to do was uh, the one that we are going to present now was a part of these regional parks. We, we were free to choose and we choose these as a representative spot uh, along this uh, loop. I mean, it's uh, uh, they ask us to develop three different Zoom because of time. Today we will present only one. The other two were, were like located in the other 
two different situations. So one was Kreuzberg, where the basically it's uh, the dense part of the city where there is a high level of uh, diversity in terms of architectural typology, public space, and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, Oranienburg, that it's like uh, another polarity that it's outside the dense part of the city. Uh, in relation to the this zoom, basically uh, we uh, we went outside of the of the area. We basically located the, the this prototype in a kind of uh, uh, tradition. I don't want to say tradition. It's like a kind of typical, uh, typical landscape. landscape that you can find outside of the dense part of Berlin. So uh, super large crops of uh, uh, agricultural cultivation, uh, energy production, uh, piece of forest, uh, monocultural forest, because uh, the, also the big problem of the draw of the, of the region of Brandenburg is strongly related with the level of biodiversity. So there are different, the, 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 heavy production in terms of agriculture, in terms of uh, uh, forest definition, create this problem of uh, uh, draw in the, in the ground, also in the underground water. So this part was kind of uh, a sensible area where we try to experiment a collection of different uh, tools, devices, strategies that uh, all together uh, in synergy, they can create a possible uh, um, integration between uh, the uh, integration between the nature and the uh, and the urban part of the of the project so that was the the master plan or um a schematic, of the schematic, uh, schematic diagram plan, I would say. plan of of the intervention and uh, and and you see again with different colors again with different graphics where um the the different topics that we were represented before with the tools uh, um so again, for example, starting from energy um, communities or how to increase the biodiversity levels working uh, on the blue system or on the green systems or uh, again, changing the type of agriculture. So we propose to yeah. downscale the dimension of the crops in order to uh, increase the level of biodiversity, uh, manage better the, the water system in terms of irrigation, uh, the energy production was strongly related with the idea to propose a new kind of energy that could be integrated with the landscape differently and with the water uses. So, for example, in this case, the idea of having these small uh, dogs that are called in English like villages, how we could join these two villages as a energy communities, uh, let's say also uh, linked through a very small scale the pixel agriculture in in contradiction with these mono big monocultural crops and and of course on the other hand uh, how again to work with the energy fields that are, are also playing with the water itself and uh, and of course we wanted to represent this in uh, in very different uh, uh, typology of drawings and uh, and we ended up having a sort of uh, collages that we actually uh, it's one of the tools that we used to use uh, because we, of course, we are a fan of nice renders, but uh, colleges are always helping us to, to think uh, in, uh, in images. No, it's the very first draft that we do, and sometimes they're also the final one. <laughs> uh, another important project that we, we are actually currently developing, it is uh, the Radvan Tesfet and um, you will see some pictures some drawings but we are actually in the process of uh, of constructing it uh, hopefully in uh, in the next uh, uh, summer slash autumn and uh, but we started this project actually very long time ago uh, almost in 2018 when we did the very first competitions and uh, so it's a it's a dear one i would say as well mm, and uh, we are in the in the city center uh, of Berlin in the middle of the city, and this is the U1, so it's the elevated uh, S-Bahn, elevated uh, uh, metro line, that is cutting the city um, almost from one side to the other. And is linking different kind of neighborhoods, so it's a really important and historical infrastructure that is uh, uh, joined different parts of the city. So this one is an historical picture, 
and because of that, uh, uh, I mean, what is interesting of this uh, uh, viaduct is that basically Skatting Kreuzberg, it's uh, a potential space of, uh, uh, it's a potential public space where different things can happen, where basically uh, the level of the, di the diversity in terms of social, culture, in terms of uh, uh, urban space can be in some way collected, can be uh, merged. But nowadays it is simply, let's say, uh, a rest space, I would say. No, it's the under part of the viaduct that either is not used or it is used as a parking lot. And um, and it's it's really in the middle of, of the city, so it could be really a, a potential space. I mean, a little bit like, uh, maybe it's not a great paragon, but the, like comparison, like the, the Highland was it in, in New York. Here we are really talking about seven kilometers of uh, of potential space crossing berlin and um, and you see here you know the, the quality it's, it's very poor at the moment and uh, and we were asked to develop uh, a test field that is uh, um, a big mock-up of uh, of these seven kilometers so, and, uh, before to introduce the mock-up uh, it's important to mention that uh, uh, basically the idea of uh, transforming this space came from a uh, local association, it's called Paper Plane, uh, that proposed to the city to transform uh, the, the space under the viaduct in a bike lane. Yeah, but what we we always discuss with the with the client that this is not is not just a bike lane, it's it's furthermore it's something different. Uh, because it's cutting the whole city, it's passing through the whole city and uh, it's crossing very different neighborhood and the one of the test belt is uh, it's Kreuzberg I don't know if you know anything about that but it's a very uh, vivid neighbor active, and yeah. active neighbor uh, in Berlin quite uh, different in terms of uh, uh, people in terms of practice that are there in terms of uh, uh, multicultural aspects so it is a very interesting spot also from 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 a different point of architectural um, aspects uh, there is the famous uh, um, Kreuzberg mission that means uh, like a Kreuzberg mix uh, because it's very different in terms of also typology of architecture that are there like in, instead of in, in terms of planning of the neighbor and uh, and so we were in this context and we started the project from uh, uh, some um, participation groups understanding what the people of of the whole Berlin not just from the from the Kreuzberg from uh, the neighbor wanted to have in this space what they could imagine and um, and it was very interesting because we tried to integrate uh, uh, the results of this discussion into the project that um, right now you it, you see um, a draft plan of it and uh, we are talking about a little bit more than 200 meters and it is um let's say structured as two islands of um, of activities and in the middle in between these islands uh, there will be a green uh, a green buffer or a green uh, uh, area and uh, and of course the aspect that is is not just a bike lane it's very important because we see that space um, like a, a a condenser of activities i mean we have now two different islands the first one is uh, we call it the interaction insel that means uh, the islands of interaction and the other one is the rad insel so the islands of the of the bikes so we wanted to give different structures to this program one that of course is more related to the social and the interchange the exchange between people and the other one is more related to the to the bike infrastructure and uh, if you want to stop and fix your bike if you want to rest uh, while you are on the bike you can do that there but of course uh, uh, the one of the most important aspect is like uh, removing space to the car so uh, the strong action was uh, to demolish uh, will be to demolish the the parking lots in between the two island and bring there uh, a more permeable surface with uh, uh vegetation different kind of vegetation that we will explain
And here you see uh, some uh, schemes that are not the final layout because we are still discussing that, but um, we wanted to give a, a catalog of possible actions because we see that space as a as a flexible area, especially if we want to imagine that extended to the seven kilometers. So it's not just the test well, but it is also like a possibilities of activities that you could have in the other uh, in the other kilometers. And that was the like a zoom in on the activities on bikes. So everything should be related to like um, a biker uh, three. Point zero Let's say that zero. there was a kind of dense and long research about the needs of the cyclists, uh, the needs of the citizen living next to the uh, the viaduct. Uh, what could happen there? Which are the objects? Uh, uh, which are uh, uh, permanent? Which are uh, uh, not permanent? So there is a kind of uh, uh, super dense uh, um, research about the possibility, the possibilities of. Uh, how to design this public space uh, that can be something new for the city uh, there. And uh, last summer, um, there was like the, the first, uh, it was the test field of the test field, let's say. It was a small event, uh, in takes part uh, last summer in August, where basically we uh, start to, to, to promote the project and to, to try to test what can happen there. So the, the, we were uh, demolishing the first two parking lots uh, that introduced also our, an important aspect of uh, this project, but in general of uh, uh, our uh, project that it's like the possibility to, to think a project as a kind of uh, uh, material uh, circle, uh, material reuse circle or transformation of the materiality of the of the space and because of that the idea was like to remove the tiles uh, the concrete tile that they were uh, defining the parking lots the, and then collect them to to create something new to create something new that when this in that case was like uh, different benches um, simply uh, done with the uh, Overposition of the different bricks uh, and a simple, uh, I would say, it's technological great. system um, that in the future uh, could be also uh, integrated in the project different because the idea is uh, to reuse the brick to uh, define the pavings, the pattern of the art surface. That it's not 100% art surface because the idea is uh, always uh, to consider the, the art surface permeable for the water. So the keeping the joints larger and uh, consider the, 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 the problem of managing the water in the landscape design, it's always uh, super important. And another crucial aspect of the of the project that uh, have been developed in the Aktionstage, so in this test of the test, but it will be of course more uh, much developed more. much more into the final project is the typology of the green structure. So again, we have to confront ourselves. What does it mean having a green into public space? And especially with the rise temperature that we are facing with the drought and the fact that it's not raining as much as before. So we were asked and um, to develop a, a very low budget uh, maintenance systems how we could collect the water from the from the viaduct as well and from the rainwater so having this kind of really really low depression areas where the water could be collected and then slowly released into the ground and of course it would also create a very biodiverse or let's say animal added design uh, topic into the project so how the whole project could be uh, not just lived by cyclists and the citizens, but also by animals, very little one that could Insects. also live uh, in uh, around the area. And that were again images of the of the test field. It's a very uh, very reduced selections, and uh, it's not the final one. But we were testing how the plants would uh, would have lived there for one year before the final outcome uh, would uh, would arrive and this is a little image of uh, how again the upcycling uh, um, benches would have lead into the into this green uh, spot and of course we were also um, 
having activities promoted by these association, how we could inform the people of what the result would be in one year and, um, and activate this place that was actually just a rest space, just a parking lot in, into something different for the, for the people of Berlin. Um, the Wunderai project uh, is uh, another interesting project because basically uh, it's the uh, kind of consequences of the pandemic during that period. No? Uh, the Wunderai project is basically we were uh, in the 2021, 20, 20, 21, 21, uh, and uh, um, one company basically contacted us to take care about uh, the possibility to rethink a large industrial area uh, based here in uh, Schoenewalde. We are in the south of Berlin, this is Mitte, this is the temple of uh, our dear park, and this one is the uh, Barenkele Brauerei. So uh, the owner of the area basically contacted us. Uh, they had already a master plan to how to reactivate and to transform the whole area in a, a cultural campus. But during the, the, the period of, uh, of the pandemic, they basically wanted to activate the open space with new activity, with a new concept of use of the, of the area. The Baron Kyle Brauer I, it's the largest and maybe oldest, if I well remember, uh, brewery uh, of, of beer uh, in, in Europe and um, have been abandoned since the 80s in Berlin. And then he had a very uh, troubled history because it was squatted until the mid of the 90s, beginning of 2000. And then um, it was bought by this owner, this investor. And then it, it, it kept it closed for a while because of course it, it is a very big object and uh, he didn't know how to do it. He, they started to have this project of uh, uh, restoration all over the place but then the pandemic arrived and then basically blocked the whole thing so they asked us uh, how to temporarily reactivate this space starting from the from the open space and when we went into the area we we walked around for the first time looking at uh, and what at what was there and everything was kind of freezed so from the from the past there was a lot there were a lot of materials not just construction but really material that were used in the factory before and for us was a very sort of fascination because uh, um, we started thinking that place as a as a wunderkammer no and the wunderkammer is a, it's a place where travelers from the past were collecting objects a little bit as we were finding there no and uh, and they were divided again into uh, naturalia and artificialia that means from nature and from uh, from uh, artificial words so again this kind of uh, double aspect or maybe a, 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 again a blurred line between what was artificial and what was natural and so thinking about these objects for us was very inspiring to create a sort of activation starting from the materiality of the place and um, and we imagine that that uh, Brower Rider Brewery has a big box uh, full of uh, different activities that could uh, be characterized um, a different corner of the area. The, not only the corner, but also the the ground floors of the of the different buildings. Um, uh, Claudia just warned me that you hear us not very well. I hope that would work. Um, that was the um the master plan of the of the plot and uh, each each corner each open spot was cut, characterized by um by a different type of uh, now Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear, hear you, but maybe Claudia and the classroom, no? 
just one second. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear us now? Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. We we, no lost, we lost the connection, but we are fine now. So I think yeah, you can you okay. can see yes. your last slide where uh let's see the slide and I'm going to convert no maybe the uh sixty one. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah. Sure, thank you. We were just mentioning that we were imagining uh, that place, um, taking the inspiration of this collection of different objects. Uh, I don't know if you heard that, but uh, thinking about the whole place like a like a wunderkammer. So a wunderkammer is uh, the place where travelers from the past were collecting ob uh, objects from their travels, and they were divided into naturale and artificialia. So again this kind of uh, uh, inspiration from the natural world and from the artificial world. And, and that for us was, uh, was the starting point of imagining that, uh, that brewery has a box full of uh, possibilities, full of uh, activities, no? and uh, each of them would have been um, Transform. transformed into a, a sort of uh, artificial gardens, let's say so, or uh, uh, an installations. So, in, the, in all the places of the of the brower. So we basically uh, was a work of uh, trying to interpret the different corners uh, inside the, the industrial area and image what could happen there, how to reactivate that space. So uh, the idea of having the different gardens was also to create different kind of uh, uh, situations inside the, the industrial. Also space. because already there it is kind of Pre present to this uh, um, strong, relation. strong relationship. Yeah, there were trees or shrubs uh, that were growing in between the buildings, and that was very fascinating. At least for the first one, that uh, was a, a kind of secret garden. When we entered this building, we suddenly imagined that place as a as a green uh, a great greenhouse, a great greenhouse. And uh, and so we think we thought how to cover that roof with a special glass that would have been become a lantern during the night and transform the inner uh, yard, let's say the inner part, as a as a secret gardens, and uh, and each of them uh, were kind of also inspired by the architecture. That's another spot. And uh, for example, these uh, had these very. A metallic roof uh, that was not covered at all. So the question is, what do we do in an uncovered structure? And and suddenly the idea was uh, to imagine that space as a, a amplification of the reflection of the sky, you know, that could take place, of course, during the day, but as well during the night, and uh, to cover the whole uh, inner part from uh, reflective materials. And um, the one of the main spots that actually we realized uh, it is the one in the center. So it's the it's what we call the valley because it was very the, the core of the whole place, and uh, and the situation when we arrived was like that. So full of uh, uh, rubbish uh, pile, uh, but you can see in the in the right on the left uh, uh, this kind of podest uh, that were used to arrive to the level of the buildings, and for that. It was our starting point because we we wanted to reach that level and use 
the space of, uh, of, of the, the ground floor of the, of the ground buildings. floor of the buildings and as well to to kind of uh, activate these different levels and the idea was to uh, recreate these uh, uh, to enlarge, plateau, yeah, to enlarge, to play with the, with the high difference and to take an, an opportunity from the high different in order to, to, to define a space that has a kind of scenography that can, uh, can be flexible in terms of uh, event or things that they can happen in this uh, central spot of the yeah, area. Also because there were the facades of the unused building that could have been used as a screen for, for kinos or for match. Uh, we were uh, in the in the champions uh, world, world champion, cup. yeah, world cup, <laughs> and uh, and so we we designed this uh, kind of big topography that we're creating uh, the valley of the place, and uh, not little, but let's say quite fastly, we started realizing them, and at the end that was the result. So we also activate the, the part of the building here as a as a pop up uh, bar. And uh, it was really used for a very different purpose. So for theater pieces of performances, uh, as of course, as a normal uh, market, market bar, and as well as a catwalk or a club. There is a club in one of the buildings here. So it was really uh, a flexible space open to very different. It was uh, interesting in this case to see how uh, the, 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 the meaning of blur is also related with the kind of uh, uh, with the programs. No? Uh, in general, with the public space, the, here the level of flexibility was quite high. And we had the opportunity to see and to exper experience uh, the fact that uh, how a simple action inside the, inside the, the Brower Eye transformed the perception of this uh, uh, industrial area in something new, something different. Uh, the last one is a uh, competition that we just uh, uh, basically we just won the special mention. Uh, it's a kind of uh, interesting competition because it has a kind of uh, uh, it's a complex, it's a super complex project that has a different relation with the thematic of the of the blur. I would say. Uh, the Kuz Commission of Dusseldorf basically organized a competition because of the necessity of the Deutsche Bahn, the, the, the train Italia of Germany, the, I train, say, uh, uh, the train company, uh, of enlarging the, the, the railway because of uh, uh, to enlarging the railway. So they need to enlarge the space of the, uh, the railway. And basically, the city asked uh, ask to the Deutsche Bahn to uh, define the uh, sound barriers along the railway. Uh, of course, uh, the railway is uh, cutting the, 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 whole the, the whole city in different parts. So from the historical center, from the most dense part of the city, uh, to the low density with... with um, Family, family houses. houses, villas, till uh, big uh, uh, infrastructural nodes, uh, polarity. This is the main station of the airport, or throughout the forest, or more natural uh, area cultivated next to the lake. So it was a kind of uh, uh, complex uh, project because of the scale, because of the context, the different kind of context. And also uh, another important note was that uh, we were selected, I mean, the, basically the organizer asked to involve inside the, inside the, the group uh, an artist. And because of that, we got in contact with Fabian Net that we involved in the participation of this project. Um, and another important topic, of course, uh, uh, was the involvement of the engineer. And in this case, we had the opportunity to collaborate with uh, Philip Ram. The yeah, I mean, the, 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 the fact that is, uh, it's a complex structure because it's 25 kilometers of, uh, of sound barrier and the cutting through very different part of the city, you can imagine that uh, was also a very big topic for the population of Dusseldorf. To accept to a accept kind of a big wall uh, with an average of four till six, six seven meter high, 
that change completely the impact of uh, uh, what you can see from your window, what uh, of the surrounding in general of the of the of the railway. So it was very uh, it was very let's say a problem for them. It was very criticized, and um, and we were reading about it, and we were really asking ourselves, okay, from one side there is this criticism uh, from the from the city from the population. But on the other hand, uh, since, as Mirko said, it was an interdisciplinary competition and uh, the Deutsche Bahn wanted to have uh, 25 kilometers of, of art. It, it, this sound barrier should have been seen as a, almost as an art piece. That's why the, the request of having an art piece into the team. And so we were asking ourselves, uh, mm, what is the status of art in the face of the climate challenge now that we are in which we are now, we are shaking everything up. So uh, can we really build something uh, in these conditions? Uh, uh, which kind of material do we want to use? Uh, is it really moral to build something like a wall of concrete or of metal uh, passing a long 25 kilometers, passing in front of the windows of everybody? So we basically mm, start uh, taking the inspiration again of what the climate or crisis climate crisis is happening no and uh, and think about uh, which would be really be the role of of the art of the role of of the architecture and uh, a little bit taking the inspiration of the just stop the oil moment. movement uh, we wanted to answer or uh, let's say a little bit in a provocative way to just stop noise so the idea is to not uh, having a super beautiful a uh, wall that is uh, passing through the whole city and also because it's very hard to reply to all the different topics i mean uh, it would have been such a challenge uh, and too complicated so we said okay no let's be strict we want just to reply to the noise having a super low budget uh, um, solutions with the, the least uh, uh, emission zero, zero to CO2 emission possible in order that uh, it would be an answer for the health of the people for the noise cap and uh, just having a super functional um, structure I mean and because of that uh, the proposal was basically uh, related with the economy and with the uh, with the materiality of this barrier so what we proposed it was like a collection in this case we uh, basically define three different typologies, modular typologies with the same kind of fundament, with the same kind of frame protection that can be changed in relation with the uh, cost, the primary cost of the materials. So the first typology was done uh, with, uh, uh, okay. uh, with clay, so the idea was to use the 3D printing clay. The second one was uh, made in uh, wooden panels and the third one was the uh, crushed on uh, uh, in uh, in gabions uh, all the three options were uh, deeply evaluated with the, all the other uh, possible solutions that there are in the market uh, which is uh, uh, possible to use that has the uh, the the zero co2 uh, or the least zero to impact emission and because of that we basically arrived to these three different typologies uh, giving basically to the client the possibility to, to choose one of them in relation with the long process of construction. Um, an important fact was also uh, the, the idea that these three elements can be, of course, interchanged and they have a more natural impact on the context. Uh, the second important topic was uh, the territorial consequences of the of the barrier. So, how this uh, uh, sound infrastructure, sound uh, installation, sound sound barrier uh, will affect the 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 city of Dusseldorf. So, in uh, in relation with the climate change, we see we we research that in the future. The, uh, the the climate also in Dusseldorf will be different, and it will have a great uh, um, impact. The heat, uh, the, the heat island, heat effect. island so effect. That's actually the forecast of the heat island effect in the 50 or 70 years now. I don't remember, and uh, it was basically the completely red the whole city, and therefore the the two strategies that we were adopting here were 
um, one was having next to the the wall like a green corridor using the um, the area that it was still part of the of the property and the second one was having the whole inner part of the of the ra railway um let's say using very light materials like a uh, uh, very light uh, um, gravel or having a light uh, uh, clay or uh, painted in wood the, the white the white painting so everything was a kind of uh, uh, white uh, albedo uh, so white corridor in order to reflect as much as possible uh, the light uh, the, the inside and having and reducing uh, a bit the heat island effect and that was the Mm, the overall map again you see the interconnection of this green network that is running parallel to the to the, the railway and one other topic was proposing to the to the client to the Deutsche Bahn uh, to split the the, the 25 uh, uh, kilometers in segment that each team that were invited to the competition this one was more developed. yeah this one was like uh, uh, i would say the support from the artist uh, smartly uh, propose to suggest that why uh, such a big project such a, a huge infrastructure should be designed from only one team so the proposal was let's divide the, the 24 kilometer in uh, 12 uh, sectors as the 12 uh, participants that were involved in the competition and give a, give to each of them one of this uh, sector where they can try to experiment their proposal in order to transform uh, the the city as a kind of uh, not biennale not be, but almost not like. a biennale but a kind of uh, since the topic was the art, well, let's try to reuse uh, uh, the different part of the city as uh, and to reply to the different differences that they are in a different context uh, from different point of view of the designers. Like so. an art gallery, like a 25 kilometers of art gallery. And uh, but of course, one of let's say we gave them, uh, we wanted to give them rules. So again, you have to respect the materiality. You have to be careful in terms of zero to emission. But of course, you have to be respectful for this green corridor. Trying again to answer how to unpave the uh, surfaces next to the wall. How you could manage again the water uh, uh, management, water protection, and uh, uh, as well to increase as much as possible also in the construction of the wall, the, the biodiversity of the this kind of human and non-human again uh, living environment. And, and there, those are a kind of a representation of, of the sections of the wall where it was clear also from the very technical uh, solutions how, for example, the foundation of the wall was supposed to be only towards the part of the railway or on the other way around how the cap of the noise, uh, sorry, the noise cap of the wall could be a sort of a collector, water collector or a, let's bring. say deviation of the water towards the the green corridor next to it and um, and of course uh, um, we were also asked to to give a sort of a, a final image and that was a little bit the representation uh, the situation before it, the actual situation and here you see how the unpaving uh, solutions the reactivation of the ground floor use of this clay material was the one that we proposed i mean unfortunately i would say that we this is the end uh unfortunately we didn't uh, got like the first, the first uh, or we didn't were selected between the winners but just the special mention because the jury select the idea i mean said that the idea was super interesting uh, everything was uh, super interesting but basically they wanted to use uh element they were already in the in the, in the market and our proposal was to experiment in terms of definition of the, the modular element. So the, but we really, they didn't have the time to... Say we enjoyed. To, yeah, we enjoyed a lot. <laughs> so that was the last image. And um, yes, thank you very much again for having listened to us almost an hour. <laughs> so we are uh, looking forward to the questions. <laughs> We can so like rotate the so you can see basically the class as a sec. Very <laughs> hello. Hello. Bye. Hi. Hi. <laughs>
Thank you very much, first of all. And uh, it was really, really interesting. And uh, another time, I, I really want to thank you, Clyde, Claudia, for choosing uh, all these different studios with, with different approaches. This time, what I, what I found really, um, I mean, uh, in your approach, I really feel that you are deeply, that you were deeply motivated by the reflection you did during the pandemic period. And, of, of, and also, uh, of course, you have an approach that is uh, uh, oriented towards sustainability uh, in a very, very smart and uh, new way. Uh, of, I hope that you know uh, Donna Haraway, they, 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 they named her at the beginning of the lecture. So, uh, her book about Antropocene, Kutucene, they are really important to read nowadays. And uh, what, what I think is uh, what they showed us is uh, it's impressive how things have changed in less than a century. If we think about, for example, uh, Atom Charter by Chiam Le Corbusier, and uh, how that, that uh, program was uh, um, oriented in a way where a human being was at the center, and everything was in function of his needs. So, uh, living, mobility, leisure, and uh, um, and uh, work, all human activities. Now we really have to rethink everything. And uh, of course, since then was uh, we named uh, we, we we talk about uh, their work a little, and uh, they 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 try to see things differently, uh, but still in a way where human being was at the center, while nowadays we really have to think to a world where we are not at the center anymore. And that's what I think they are trying to do. Uh, I don't want to talk too much. I want to leave my students free to ask whatever they want, but Thank you very much, because it was the first time in this seminar that we focused very specifically on these issues so important today. Thank you. Thank you. So if Claudia wants to say something or... No, really, really thank you again. I'm here. <laughs> thank you again. And uh, I was also impressed also by the um, great topic of involving also the city because um, usually we intervene or investigate in existing context. Uh, I was thinking about the viaduct, uh, but also the new uh, train line. So uh, how the, the perception of the, the, the citizen that um, live in those uh, neighborhoods, uh, it's really important uh, for our investigation uh, in terms of, as I said, perception, memory of the space, um, uh, spatial interaction. So it's uh, a topic that I find that is that was recurring uh, in your uh, projects uh, and also your approach in general. So I think it was very interesting to to investigate to analyze. So thank you again for sharing with us your uh, approach and your. Uh, critical investigation in this sense, but maybe the students can you have, questions? have questions for you. Hi. Also, for oh, oh, well, since you work with yeah. uh, sorry, let's do that. So you see. And you work like with many neighborhoods, so many people and citizens. Which were the ways in which you talk to the citizens in order to know their needs, or which was your approach in order to know 
that you need. So you can consider that in your project and include that those activities or those things that which was your approach to the people who are living there. So your project could uh, be uh, integrated you mean, into the you mean in general or no, to a specific yeah. project? No, in general, when you want to work in a new neighborhood or in a big scale project in which you have like many neighborhoods that are different from each other between them. Uh, it's an interesting question. I mean, depend a lot from the from the project itself. Uh, because, for example, uh, in the Radban project, uh, there were uh, kind of super dense uh, uh, participation process organized from the client. So we had the opportunity to, to receive uh, uh, protocols or document with uh, many information of how the citizen and the people were imagining uh, that space, what can happen, what they need, uh, and so on. Regarding the uh, the other project, I would say that in general, in Germany, there is, uh, in particular for such big uh, project, there is almost uh, almost uh, always, uh, often, there is a kind of uh, participation project, uh, um, participation process before the, the project or the competition. So we have always some document where we can get some information. Um, Maybe what what would be very important in our in, in our opinion is not simply have the the participation process before. I don't think that is always mandatory or necessary. Actually, uh, what it is important is how to communicate the projects uh, during it or after it. So in order to feel that is also part of the of the cityscape it's, it would be well accepted by the community so that for me it's kind of uh, it's kind of crucial um, i mean and because of that role it's kind of always important to uh, to define the project as a kind of process that uh, that basically include all the 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 different uh, elements that are part of the future built uh, space now for example in the in the Radban project was the issue of the reuse of the tiles, try to use uh, uh, sustainable materials, so wood, uh, local, uh, uh, try to consider the vegetation not only like uh, uh, green space, but it's something that needs to be well designed in relation with the drought, with the use of the, the with the, the issue, for example, in that project, we will not have irrigation systems. So we need to, to design a green island, a green spot without the irrigations. Or in the uh, RRX project in Dusseldorf, the fact that the idea was to use materials that, that are local, that can be, uh, they don't have a CO2 impact on the context. So there is always, uh, the project, it doesn't have also a, a direct uh, relation with the with the people only because you include their need but it's because you include their future in some way the future of the of this of the space that they will live and, and there is always a part of i mean maybe education is not the right word but but let's say dialogue i would say because it's not that uh, the, the, the the citizens want you know a giant pizza in the middle of the of the of the area uh, or uh, something very weird and then and then the, the the planners has to provide that no it's a matter of uh, uh, dialoguing let's say explaining what are we imagining and why we think it's good and uh, have any answers out of it so it's not just uh, uh, let's say something given but uh, explained and thought through and maybe readapted i mean the, the fact of having for example into the radban uh, a test field that we would be able uh, or maybe actually more the client would be able to understand which are maybe the objects that are more used uh, the, the facts into the project that are um, more uh, let's say well accepted and the other ones that are not functioning maybe would be removed into a future project of the seven kilometers so i mean having this kind of flexible process is it, it's interesting would be interesting the process is never linear, I would say. Okay, thank you very much. Other questions or also considerations?
<laughs> okay. Anything. It was interesting, really. And I think it's really interesting. It's time to confront ourselves with different environments. This time Berlin, for example, on different scale. This time also landscape project and the last project I, I found it it was very interesting and also uh, your effort to do things with simple your smart way of using upcycling for example I think it's very it's very interesting and uh, and also your way of growing very clear and simple and uh, uh, not so, um, I mean, influenced by this uh, need to use um, uh, sensational rendering and uh, it's, it's very clear and uh, it goes straight to the, the, the focus, the issue of the, the project. Yeah, so, and one thing that we always say to the students is that the representation is the perfect tool, is the necessary tool to, to explain the project because one of the most important things is to try to have always a storytelling behind the project because if the storytelling uh, and the representation are not matching together, it's kind of difficult to, to support also your also ideas. For us, sometimes we realize that Some... something is not uh, fluid no, into the, in the storytelling or maybe a drawing is not very saying something clear so i mean also for us it's a it's a test if everything that we have in mind it's it's well right yeah i i, I thought about uh, a quote by matisse uh, he, he, I, I, he used to say that uh, uh, the simple things are the most difficult to explain yeah. Yes, and I think I think it's really, really uh, appropriate. Uh, it's easy to like uh, seduce the client with uh, very uh, sensational drawings, but make things simple. Um, uh, no, uh, stay with simple drawings and focus on simple lines and colors and uh, it, it obliges you to um, to be really attentive to the main issues of the project to respond to the main issues i think that it's a uh, it's a it's i i would say an ethic ethical approach to design also <laughs> so it was a really interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you to you. Thank you to you. And uh, yeah, we'll say good luck also with your studio, with your project. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, back with your future project. Ciao. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.